speckled trout hello again folks welcome to another edition of between the banks i'm bob goose oh nice speck Well, we're shooting this right after Hurricane Michael crashed into Florida. Now, we didn't have much effects, but it's been flooding uh, down in the field. So we got our first opportunity to splash the boat and come out here and shoot a fresh show. So stay tuned. I'm gonna get this fish off, and of course I'm gonna tell you who, what, where, when, why, and how. And when I come back, I'm gonna answer all the calls and the emails and the texts that I got. That said, Captain Bob, you didn't give us the coordinates on the last show, episode 1541. I'm gonna straighten everything out when I come back. Stay tuned. It's another rock up side in addition to between the banks. Between the Banks is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana. What does it mean? to be a Louisiana company. It means we all work where we live. It means the people we call our customers, we also call our neighbors, our friends, our family. It means we'll be here for the same people who've been here for us. We're the employees of Blue Cross. Louisiana true since 1934. Up and down the bayou. That's how we tell you to get from one place to the other. It's a little different, but so are we in Louisiana's Cajun Bayou. And once you get here, you'll understand why our Cajun runs a little deeper. Find a piece of our store on swamp tours, fishing boats, at festivals, attractions, and restaurants. Visit LACajunBayou.com to plan your trip today. Louisiana's Cajun Bayou. Rich, natural, unapologetically Cajun. Just south of New Orleans, where Cajun runs deep. Trout, another trout. So, if you're gonna catch speckled trout this time of year, we're filming this on October 13th. I think that's a 13 on my clock. But anyway, you got to understand what the fish are doing now. So the speckled trout, since the water temperature has now cooled off, and I know that from looking at my depth finder, water temperature is 72.3 degrees, smaller specks, male croaking. Okay, specs got to be 12 inches. You can pinch the tail and you can have 25. This is a male, I'm putting him in the box. So, let me pick this fish up. When I come back, I'm going to tell you why I'm fishing right here and not at the islands. Stay tuned. All right. I'm just going to take that rod and I'm going to hold it right here. Okay, so what's happening, now look folks, while I'm talking here, y'all keep an eye on that rod tip. Once you see that rod tip bow up, y'all yell at me, say, Captain Bob, you got a fish on. Oh, look, check out the rod tip. Okay, so they're already nibbling, but that last fish was just 12 and a quarter inches and it was a male. So I know that they're having a hard time getting that big goo goo minna 
uh, that I got over at Gales this morning. Uh, uh, that, that, that was, okay, I'm just going to hold it tight just in case. Look at it. Pop, 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 pop. All, small, all smaller fish. If it's a big speck, he's going to hit it. Or she, I should say, she's going to hit it. And I'm going to know it. But back to what I was talking about. You have to understand what's going on right now. The specks are moving back into the marsh and back out into the Gulf. Water temperature is at 72 degrees. Look at him pull it. Got him. Uh, that doesn't feel like much. Hadn't broke the surface yet. Oh, yeah, it feels like got a little meat to him. Might be a cat. Yep, it is a catfish. Okay. So I'm just going to leave him right there. But at 72 degrees, the fish in the spring move out to the islands. And at 72 degrees in the fall, October, they move, start moving back in and moving to the coast. So, what I did was I came to a spot where I know the fish are moving from the islands back in and they come through deep bayou or bayou Kerr. They come through bayou Rosa and they come through bayou blue heading up to Catfish Lake in the South Vermont. So, instead of running to Philo I know y'all had to be tired of all the shows that I shot at Philo this year. This year, I never went past Philo. Plenty big fish there. So, what I did was I came to Deep Bayou area. And with an east wind blowing this morning, you can see exactly what I've got here. This is where the old pipeline is. They used to have a concrete dam here with a pile of rocks. This is the same pipeline that goes to the helipad, but you can see all that nervous water. I got a falling tide, so that's where I'm casting towards that nervous water. It's cooler, it's got fish there feeding, attacking bait. But this pipeline, if you follow the sticks and you go out to that white structure that's way out there, I say way out there, it's maybe two miles at the most. That's the helipad. That's where this pipeline comes out of the water and then goes north all the way up to Bayou Rosa and even points further than that. So this is a great spot to fish. You've got the dam here. You've got the helipad. You've got the rocks. I don't know if we can see the rocks. Look at the birds that are hanging on the rocks over there in deep Bayou. L-shaped rocks. And then if you follow those birds to the right, you can see there's two boats sitting over there at the camp where the old red camp used to be, that generator shed. So this is all great spots that you can fish at Deep Bayou. And that's why I came here. Now, I'm fishing on a Saturday. Let me make sure that it's the 13th. Yep, 13th. So I'm fishing on a Saturday, 13th in October, and there's boats, Boudreaux's is packed. I normally don't fish on the weekends. So that's another reason why I'm not at Philo. Everybody's running to Philo because they looked at episode 1541. One other thing, and I'm gonna stop talking and catch some more fish. The, the GPS for, coordinates for the sandbars where the fish are dumping their eggs at Philo. I know I didn't give them on the map feature at 1541. Uh, that was my fault, getting old. But if you go to 1540, the episode, and you look at the map feature, that's going to give you the GPS coordinates. Now, everybody's been telling me, Captain Bob, man, thanks for doing YouTube. 
right now on YouTube, there's a hundred episodes of Between the Banks. The latest one, and then back a hundred episodes. That's about two years worth of shows there. So everybody gets it. And the reason I got in with the guys at YouTube is because it's on your cell phone. Just hit YouTube. When you get to YouTube, upper right hand corner, they've got that magnifying lens, touch that, and then your keyboard's gonna come up. Type in Bob, B-O-B-G-O-U-R-G-U-E-S, and that's gonna bring you to my YouTube channel. Click on that icon, that people icon. Click on that, and then it's gonna bring you strictly to my shows. All right, and you can see all of them right there anytime. And yes, you can hook a HDMI cable to your laptop, to your flat screen, and you can watch it on your home TV, flat screen. So there's the answer to all the people that called and sent me emails and texts that I didn't give the coordinates. That's where you can find them. And that's why I'm fishing right in this neck of the woods. This is a spot where all these fish are coming in and passing right through here and going north for the winter time. So, now you know all the details. I'm getting back to fishing. Stay tuned. Chasing, chasing the bait. Stop it. Let's see if he picks it up again. Yep, you got him. Looks like he'll keep but close. I'm on small fish here, folks. Small fish. Oh, man. He inhaled it. So he chased it while I was reeling him, but I'm on these small specks, 12 to 14 inches. I'm going to move off of these fish. One of the great things about fishing this area is you got this old dam that looks like they pulled it out, but there's hard bottom here. So that's why I came here first. Nervous water, bait, clean water. But I also have the rocks where all those pelicans are fit, is sitting. That's an excellent place for big fish. I'm going to take this fish off and I'm going to go to that spot next. Stay tuned. See if we can get on some bigger specks and get away from these catfish. Stay tuned. Let's see how big this one is. Check him on my renovations. Uh, measure too close for comfort so I'm gonna take this one off toss it back it's a male he's croaking and we'll go to the rocks and see what's over there stay tuned came to the rocks I don't know what this is but it feels like it's got good weight might be a cat might be a big speck no talent oh it's a big speck it's a nice speck here, buddy. Get up. Get up. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's a huge speck. Look at it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I'm telling you, the deep bayou rocks. And I know the president of South LaFouche Bank is going to get mad when he sees me over here filming the show. Because this is his favorite spot. I can't tell you how many big fish these rocks hold. Especially, especially in October and November when the fish are moving in and they pass right by here. Some of these big females just have to stay here. Now this is a spawned out female, but it's a huge fish. A huge fish. I mean a huge one. Now folks, the biggest speck that I've ever caught out here was a nine pound, 14 ounce, speck 
and it came from these rocks. If you go back and look about three years ago, you'll see me hook up to a bull redfish and then I came right back to the spot and I caught that big fish. But there you go. That's a hoss. That's a really nice speck. And look, he inhaled that storm minna. Caught him on a stormy. Storm minna's come in when, during the hurricanes and all this high water comes up. You can go on the ditches alongside LA-1 and throw a cast net, or you can go to Gail's bait shop. Her husband catches storm minnows during the stormy size. And look what that one produced. Big female, but no eggs, no belly. No belly on the fish. Nice fish here, partner. Nice fish. Okay, let's see if I can get the hook out of it. And I guarantee you, when they get this big, that's female fish. Oh, got it. Got oh, Don't bite me now. Got, got to put this on bunker grip. Now, that's not nine pounds, I'm going to tell you. But I know this is going to push four, five, six pounds. Yep, that's what it is. Right at five and a half, maybe five and three quarter on the bogey. Oh man, what a fish. Am I smiling or what? Now you know why I come fish deep by you in October, November, when the fish are moving through. I know these big females hang here. So, Man, that's an awesome fish. But this fish is going to go back in the water. Just too big. Too big. I'm going to release her. All right, stay tuned. I'm going to give you all the details of these spots around the bayou. And especially the rocks. Why I'm catching here. You go back and look at the shows. You'll see that I've caught a lot of big fish here. All right, stay tuned. I'm still shaking. And I normally shake, but I'm shaking now. Heart's really pumping good. I got another big one, folks. Oh, oh no, it's a redfish. Redfish. Come on, it's red. Come on over here. I'll take him. And he might even keep. <clears throat> now don't forget redfish, you gotta be at least 16 inches. You can have five, they gotta be at least 16 inches, and you can only have one over 27 inches in your five. Let's see how big this one is. Come on over here to my renovations tape. Negative. Negative, Ghost Rider. Too short. But if you noticed, his tail was blue. Now, folks, let me tell you what the secret to these rocks are. Okay? The rocks are shaped L. You got one row of rocks that goes north and south. You got one that goes east and west. So today I got this east wind blowing. Okay, it blew water through the dam, made that spot great. And now this water's coming, it's hitting the, the row of rocks and it's rolling around. And the current on that north end, the very north end of the rocks, that current hits that wall of rocks and cuts and carves a, a trench right through the rocks right here. Right at the end of that north end. So we're going to turn around and point into the wind. Bear with us. 
you can see the end of the rocks right there. You can see them right there, water rolling over those rocks. Well, just to the right, just to my left, your left, that's where the trench is. There's no more rocks. And you can see the slick and the bubbles that follow this trench all the way. Check out, check out the slick. And it gives the trench away. All right, so you know they got fish. Now notice real good, look at towards the left where the sticks are. That's another trench that comes and they both meet right there. And this is a pipeline. Pipeline runs through here. So that's where those two trenches meet. And this is where those big specks like to hang around. They get on the rocks through the years hurricanes have come and stuff like that and they've washed these rocks down so there's really hard bottom here and it goes all the way to the helipad where the pipeline turns north and comes through here so that's why the fish are here nervous water trench current ambush i mean great fishing spot especially for lunkers. Like I say, I know people that come and fish this spot strictly for big fish. And there's different baits that you can use. You don't have to fish it with live bait. You can do, go a DOA shrimp, but a lot of rocks here, a lot of snags. You really got to fish light so that you can feel the bait rolling over those rocks. So, really good spot. That's why I'm catching fish here. And it's good for reds, bull reds, big specks, just all kind of fish here. Flounder on the inside of the rocks where it's shallow. And that's where I've positioned the boat. I backed up close to the rocks. If I'd have got on the other side of the trench, my power pole, it's deep enough, this trench, your power pole's not gonna stick you. So you gotta get on the shallow part the inside of the L and cast into the rocks. That's the secret to the spot. Stay tuned. I'm getting back out there. Just throw it out at the northern point of those rocks and just ride the current with it. That's all you got to do. Wait for the hit and the bait just runs right down the, the ditch here. Let's take a break here. Go check out all the marina minute and I'm going to follow it with the map. Now, all the fine businessmen in Lafouche Parish, boat launches, facilities, motels, everything you need to fish. I like fishing Leeville area because just up the road at Galliano, I've got renovations. They sell Pathfinder, War Eagle, Yamaha, complete marine center, trailer parts, Anything you need for your boat, Renovations has it. And they take care of my boat. All the people that come and say, Man, Bob, your boat looks so good. Why? Renovations. Go see Holly St. Pierre and she'll fix you up. Oh, I'm getting a hit. Oh, let it go. So, and then Boudreaux's, oh, coming back. Coming back and gone. Let's see what this is. Boudreaux's Waterfront Motel. Tie your boat to the bed right there in Leeville where I fish out of. And you come to Boudreaux's, you can come to the back room 45 and I will put you on fish, especially on the weekend when I'm not fishing. She is like a good fish. Oh, it is a bad fish. It's a cat. All right. I can't believe he got that big storm minna in his mouth. Then you got Griffins right across the street, all by ice, ethanol free fuel, both at the dock and on the road, 24 hours on the road. Really great places, the bait shops, Gales, Bada Bing, a bunch of bait shops in Leeville, Golden Meadow where Gagoo is by the, by the uh, Catfish Lake boat launch. I mean, facilities all over in Lafouche Parish. 
it's, it's just an awesome parish to fish. So here's the Marina Minute, and I'm going to follow it with the map. Check it out. Boudreaux's Waterfront Motel. Dock your boat at the end of the pier, right under your room. Set up your grill. Got your own fish cleaning station, your own ramp. And for big groups, enjoy the sunset at the Boudreaux House. Boudreaux's in Leeville. Griffin's Marina and Ice has bag, block, and blown ice for whatever size boat. Both dockside and roadside ethanol free fuel, convenience store, breakfast, crispy chicken, all conveniently located in downtown. Leeville. Renovations is your complete marine center for sales, parts, and service. Pathfinder, War Eagle boats, Minn Kota motor guide trolling motors, power pole and Minn Kota anchoring systems, pumps, trailer parts. Renovations will keep you on the water. Got him. And this is a monster minnow. There's no telling what this will be. Might be a big rad, big gaff. <clears throat> Either way, you know I'm going to show it to you, whether it's a gaff catfish or whatever. Wind's picking up. Oh, I hope this is a speck. I can only hope that this is a speckled trout. Look at the size of that cockahoe. You can see. <laughs> big bait, big fish. Well, folks, there you have it. Another edition of Between the Banks. Stay tuned. If it warms back up and all, I'll be back at this thoroughfare. Keep in mind the places that you can fish this time of year, October, November, as the fish are moving in. Finally, a lot of people ask, Bob, how late can you go to the islands and catch fish? It all depends on the water temperature. And water temperature comes back up, there'll still be fish at the islands. But I like to get in these intermediate spots where the fish roll through, like deep bayou. Bayou Rosa, Bayou Blue, where it meets the lake. All of them great fishing spots. I'll show you more, just stay tuned. Don't forget, check me out on YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel, press on that people icon, and it'll bring you to the last 100 episodes of Between the Banks in HD. We'll see you next week. In the meantime, good luck fishing. One last case. Just riding that trench. That's all I'm doing. Keeping the slack out of my line and just letting that current walk with the line. <laughs>